on your page, right? On your page. What I want you to do, um, actually, I'm going to pass these around too. I want you to draw a triangle, any triangle. Uh, in fact, I purposely want you to draw a triangle that looks different to the person next to you. Draw it about like, you know, hand sized. I think that's kind of a decent size, right? Draw that triangle. It can have acute angles, obtuse angles. It can be right angled. It can be anything you like. But I do want it to be different from the person next to you. Try and draw it a little bit randomly. By the way, some of you might accidentally draw an equilateral triangle yeah. or an isosceles triangle. If you accidentally do that, that's totally okay. In fact, the point that we're going to make um, will be interesting if we've got yours as well, right? So like I said, measure out all the angles and give me some lengths too. Measure out all those sides and give me those lengths just to the uh, nearest millimeter would be great. Okay. You right? Uh, but I got like wrong stuff. Wait, how do you, you're just measuring, right? Is that what you're doing? Uh, I got 181 degrees. Oh, okay. Now, I'll ask you why. How could you add them up and get 181 degrees? Anyone? There's a real answer to that. How can you measure all the angles, add them up, and they're not 180 like they were supposed to be? Do you draw properly? Um, well, like, it's just like, your triangle is wrong, buddy. Sorry. Okay. Um, generally, what's happening is I'm just going to borrow this. Um, you guys remember from a couple of years back probably when we talk about measuring things, whether they're angles or distances, and we talk about the limits of accuracy, the limits of accuracy. So for instance, the closest that this thing can measure is um, a whole degree, right? That's what, that's what all the markings are, 180 degrees all the way around here. So if you've got an angle that's not exactly a whole number, then you're forced to approximate, right? You might approximate up, you might approximate down. Now if there are a couple of angles and you approximate both of them up, because it's like, well, that's the closest thing. When you add them, you're going to get more than 180 degrees because you've approximated upward, okay? So it's okay. That's kind of just what happens. Don't forget the distances. show of hands if you've done all your angles and all your sides. Hands up. Yeah, cool. All right, that's enough. Let's move on. If you're still going, that's okay. Just listen as you're doing that. What you should have is something that looks roughly like this, okay? Or actually, I take that back. Yours will look nothing like this probably because I've asked you all to draw two different triangles. But the feature I'm about to point out to you on my triangle, you should be able to point out on yours, okay? You can see, probably, on most of you, one of your angles is bigger than the other two. Right? So you have a biggest angle. If you've got an isosceles triangle or an equilateral one, you might not see that. Now mine, you can see, is 121 degrees. Okay? There's my biggest angle. Now I want you to pay attention to the fact that this biggest angle is opposite the biggest side in the triangle. Do you see that? 121 degrees. That's opposite <coughs> 71 in my triangle, which is clearly the longest side. And if you have a look at yours, look at the biggest angle, and look at the side that's opposite it, facing it, and it should also have been the side that you measured out was the longest, okay? Um, correspondingly, if you have a look at the smallest angle, the smallest angle, it should also be opposite the smallest side, okay? The smallest side and the smallest angle will be opposite each other. And it has to be this way, right? Because if you think about it, if you just um, have a pair of random sides, right? A pair of random sides, and you take this angle in here between them, what we call the included angle, right? If you were to take those two and widen them, increase the angle between them, you're necessarily increasing the length of the side that joins them, right? Do you see that? This red length over here will get bigger and bigger and bigger as the angle that defines it gets wider and wider and wider. Okay, so let's just quickly jot this down, right? Uh, and by the way, if you've noticed, for example, those of you who created um, an equilateral triangle by accident, okay, because all your angles are equal, you've made all your sides equal as well. Or if you made an isosceles triangle by accident, if you've got two equal angles, then those are clearly not equal. If you've got two equal angles, then the sides opposite them are also equal, right? There's a clear relationship going on here. Let's write this down, right? In a triangle, we started with the longest side. Um, the longest side 
is always opposite the largest angle. Always opposite. In a triangle, the longest side is always opposite the largest angle. Um, the same is true for the smallest side. And if it's true for the longer side and the shortest side, it must be true for the side that's left over, right? And you can take the same pattern if angles are equal, the sides that are opposite them are also equal. So this kind of thing seems like cannon fodder for understanding and using the, the trigonometric ratios to understand what's going on, okay? Now, we want to use trigonometry to try and formalize this relationship, okay? But the problem with doing that is that in our triangle, all the triangles you've drawn, unless you've done this coincidentally, none of them are right angle, right? They're not right angle triangles. And trigonometry, sine, cos, and tan, they start in right angle triangles. And I don't have any right angles here, okay? But you guys know from, actually from this guy, right? You guys know that even where no right angle triangles appear, there are still right angle triangles kind of hiding in there, right? Like this guy. And there are, sure enough, right angle triangles hiding in all of the triangles you have drawn. Okay? All you have to do to show them, and I'm going to ask you to construct this just on yours. If you have a different color, that would be awesome. Take that biggest angle, that biggest angle, right? And I'm going to ask you to draw a, a line from that point to that opposite side, the longest side. But here's the side I want you to draw, the line I want you to draw. I want you to draw what's called an altitude. An altitude looks like this. It's perpendicular to the side that it connects to. Okay? So it goes from that biggest angle to the biggest side, but it does so in such a way that it's perpendicular. Right? Like if I went off at a different angle, I'd get some other angle. But um, I want the altitude, or you could put it this way, that's the perpendicular height. Okay? Now once you've done that, and we're going to do this in a brand new triangle so that we all look the same, because otherwise it's going to get a bit confusing in a second. Once you've done that, you see what started with no right angles, I now have two right angle triangles hiding in there right next to each other, okay? And they're the ones we're going to use. So now that you're content, we can take any triangle we like and we can put right angle triangles in it, okay? Over here, let's all draw the same right angle triangle so that you can follow what's going on. It's gonna look something like this, 